we're live. All right, so I'm gonna show a couple of ways to skin a bear. Actually, really one way to skin a bear if you're gonna do a rug, or it could be used for life size as well. Where to make cuts and where not to make cuts. The biggest mistake a lot of people make is they cut it up the inside of the leg and across the top of the foot. You wanna stay away from the top of the foot. So this bear was taken last night and was skinned up the front and gutted by the hunter to cool the bear down. So the first decision you make on a bear, you lay it on his back, you start at the butthole, and you go straight up the belly all the way through to the chest. And you stop right here between the armpits, right in the middle of the chest, right at the top of the rib cage. This will allow you to A, you can use it for a life-size mount, B, you can cut it back here and do a shoulder mount of it, and C, if you're gonna do a rug, your taxidermist can continue cutting all the way up through, but it gives you options from the time in the field to when you actually get to your taxidermist. So the first cut's already been made up the middle. It's pretty straight, pretty symmetrical. It's peeled back. The insides are taken out so the barrel's cooled down. It's kind of stiff, but we'll work with it. Next cut you make, the bear's on his back. I grab it by the foot. Doesn't matter how big the bear is, you should be able to grab his foot by one hand. Use your knife with the blade away from you. And at the end of the heel, where it comes to a point, is where you want to stab your knife. Just stick it in his leg, straight up the back of the leg. Continue your cut. Come out right at the butthole, right there. That's one complete clean cut. Now walk around to the other side the same way. He's a little stiff. Again, start at the heel, right at the back of the leg. You can see where the hair goes here, and the hair is going here. It's almost like an imaginary line. You can see the distinct line of the hair. You don't need to get fancy and come curving in the crotch and making wavy little lines. It, it's un unnecessary. From the heel to the butthole. If your knife slips out, just go back, find where your seam was. So you start again in the same spot. You don't have a bunch of jagged edges. It doesn't look like somebody used a chainsaw on it. Again, I clean your, the cut now. The easier it is for your tax returns to sew it up, the less repairs need to be made. And the less repairs that are made, the more money you save, All right? So I'm just opening up the back leg real quick. Getting through here. So we got both cuts in the back made, one up the belly. Next thing I do, it's a little stiff. I will see if it's fresh. You can do it as well. So if you zoom in on here, you can see its foot has a nice curve to the pad. Then you have the little thumb pad is down here. You don't want to cut through this pad. So if you want a rug, you skin up to the pad and you stop. And in the field, before you remove the feet, which I'll go over in another class, is actually you can remove this whole pad, all right? But you don't want to cut through the pad. Just, we're going to cut from right here, straight line on the inside of this little, basically this little thumb, to the elbow. And I'm going to turn my knife and go straight through here and tie into where this is cut up the chest. And if you look right here, you can see, just like anything else would have, this hair is really thin. This is his armpit area. There's no sense in cutting all the way down through here. You're going to have a big thin spot right in the middle of your rug. So if you cut down through it, right through the middle of it, when this gets sewed up, this little wedge actually gets cut out and brought together flush. And this won't even be in your rug. A couple of people saying hello. There are 42 people watching. And Steve Hayduck says, thanks for the broadcast. Now just got to get a bear. Yep. Well, good luck with that. And Christina said, and Paul says, hello. Hi, Christina. So I just made a cut from the pad to the elbow. Nothing fancy. There's the elbow bone straight down through right where my incision was. And if you want to, you can open this up a little bit. I'm just doing this to peel back a little, see a little better. We'll give a big shout out to Chad Glauser for the, for the bear donated. It's 
my understanding, this was taken off of uh, Nunya Ridge somewhere. Right around Mystery Lake. Yeah, pretty popular spot. So just like this one here, one from the inside of the pad, all the way down to the elbow, straight through. Same thing again. There's the outside of the wrist. I want to stay on the inside of this. All right. So I'll take my knife, poke it right there, straight through. You can see how the hair goes here and the hair is going here. It's creating a natural line. All right, that's where you're going to want to cut. Does it need to be exact? It doesn't need to be exact. But if you're cutting from here down the front of the leg to the front of the foot, you're already off to a bad start. It's a lot easier to skin a bear when it's fresh, too. Scott Munn says, thank you guys for what you do. One of the best shops in Alaska, period. Hugh Harmon says, hello. Looking good. Here we go. Reed Greenwood says, he, he's hunted there, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very popular spot. Lots of good bears in there. It's right off the hidden trail. All right, so the bear's on the side. I got it around. Normally you'd have like a, heart, a partner helping you, um, somebody holding his foot, maybe a kid. Give them a chance to get dirty, a little bit of blood on their hands. They can hold a paw for you. And with two people doing it, it's a lot faster, but only one person should have a knife. You get two people working with a knife, somebody loses a finger. I'm just getting down the leg a little ways. Well, you're very welcome, Carson. It'll help us too if it helps you. So I just basically skinned the inside of his leg down to the side. I'll do the front leg, do the same thing, get it over here, and I'll do the other side real quick. <laughs> He's done a couple of bears already, Carrie, so yeah, it's easy for him. from Canada. Canada, eh? Hi, John Lucas. Oh, that's my Lucas Muskox partner. Yep. His dad's probably watching, too. His dad actually showed me how to skin an Arctic fox in like two minutes without a knife. It's crazy. John Lucas Sr., I believe. John says yes. All right, so in the field, you point your, your camera into here. You got all kinds of tenons and whatnot, all right? There's no sense in trying to bust out the Havilons and start skinning out feet and everything when you have the whole thing on a carcass. So all we're doing is taking the hide off the bear and you can see where these tendons are. So all I gotta do is cut it. You don't need a bone saw or a hatchet or a chainsaw or an ax. You can see where it bends.
I use my leg or a table. Danielle's asking what kind of knife are you using? Ooh. We'll give a shout out to the Alaska Life. It's a knife I got off of Kyle Moffat probably four or five years ago. And this thing skinned, I don't know, several hundred animals. And it's made by Bulldog Knives. It's a guy out of California. So it just shows the proof that not everything in California is bad. I make good knives. Brandon Hitchcock says, you look like you've done that a time or two. Big question is, do you flush them on the floor with a straight razor like Tim McMahon? No. <laughs> we flush them on this table right here. There's a bear right there. Don out to get flushed tomorrow. So you can see how this leg was taken off. And it's a lot easier too, so if you're trying to roll it, this is a great time to remove the quarters. So instead of rolling this bear around and fighting the legs, the front shoulders is protected by a scapula. Hugh Harmon says, tell us about salting and when to do it. We'll do that in the class later. I'm actually gonna show how to remove the feet, how to turn the ears, how to turn the lips, how to split the nose, and how to flush the bear, like what an adequately flushed bear is, and salt it. You wanna do that today? Yeah, I'm probably not live. But I'll put a video together. I'll take this foot out the rest of the way. actually going to stay on the Facebook page um, as a, like a post. I'm not sure how we're going to be able to put that on YouTube. We'll try to figure it out. Doing some bear yoga here. Yeah, it's just really stiff because it's rigor mortis that set in and it's been, I don't know, 18 hours, 17 hours since it was killed. So you're having a fight. It's pretty stiff. But. Scott Dunn wants to know, how do you prep them for the freezer if we can't get to you for a few days? So you can leave the feet in and the head in if you want to. Just uh, fold the bear fur to fur with the skin out, head on top, feet on top, and put in a trash bag, like a black heavy duty trash bag, and then you can put it in the freezer. But don't put the head inside with the feet inside and roll the whole bear up because it could take three, four, five days just for the, the, the skull to freeze. Because all those fat on the bear and the fur is what insulates them. It'll insulate, it's, it'll insulate them from freezing too. So here's the back leg. It's got the tendon. Get it exposed, grab it, give it a big crank. Jackie says, this is skinning. If it was full body taxidermy, you would leave on the limbs, yes? <laughs> what do you mean by the limbs? I don't know. So be, this is being skinned for a life size or a rug. So We you, don't keep the limbs for... Yeah, you notice the pads are on there so there's an option when the guy brings it to me and he wants a life size it's going to dictate how I cut the pads off if it's a rug this whole pad will get cut off and removed and thrown away and the bear will be flush without this pad Pete Imhoff wants to know where do you put the monster drink when you're in the field uh, that's why I got a little dog. She's got a little backpack. And tell Pete that his sheep is last. <laughs> <laughs> you 
again. So make it easier for, for quartering the moose or the, the bear, excuse me. Just go in here. It's one joint, like with everything else. So state law in Alaska requires in most areas, you gotta take out the back straps and the four quarters of the meat. So, We don't use wire frames. Um, we actually use foam forms um, that the hides go on to. How's it going? We got a, the first visitor. Hey. Got Mr. Bill Cummings. Got your name right? Yep. I figured I saw a lot of holes on bears. Can I? Make a lot of repairs on bears that are skinned. Probably not necessarily improperly. I'm sure the person did the best that they could in the situation and they probably thought they knew how to do. But if the bear is skinned better, you know, with the least, least amount of holes and cut in the right spot, then uh, it just makes it easier. Jackie, yes, basically. That's that's how the taxidermy works. We put the fur on once it's tanned and um, put it onto the form and it doesn't have anything real that's left on it besides the hide, really. You have um, artificial teeth and you have artificial eyes that go in it. Um, Unless you shoot a baby stone sheep in Canada, and then it's gonna get fake horns too to make them look bigger. <laughs> My comments for Pete. <laughs> Andrew Benedict wants to know when you're coming to Kansas to hunt whitetail. Whenever the wife lets him. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Von Ayer wants to know what's your preferred method to keep your knife sharp in the field? I don't think I should be answering this question. Sharpen it before you go. If you have a quality knife, you won't need to sharpen it for a long time. Would you prefer a dorsal cut for a life size or yes. not? Yeah, if I'm doing the work, if the guy brings me the bear and hole and it's gonna be for sure a life size mount, then you wanna cut from the back between the ears to the base of the tail. But nine out of, 99 out of 100 bears will be skinned for a rug and then they get here and they be like, ah, oh, I wanna do this or no, I want to life size it or whatever. So, right here, there's a little pad. Oh, boy. Sometimes it's a little difficult to try to find that joint. Well, it's there, but he's only got one leg, so there's not enough weight on the body to keep it still. So when I twist it, pop it. So you're going to want a bear with a tail. <laughs> so you can see how I just skin up both back legs. There's the butthole. This is where his tail is. You can come in here and cut the tail off the bone. Just leave the tailbone in it, which is only about five inches long. Just leave it for your tax hammers to remove.
Rob. So we got three legs down. We're down to one leg left. What is the typical turnaround time on a rug? Uh, nine months. This is last year. I took in 104 bears. So right now I'm at like 11 months on bears from last year. And there's 12 left that I'm doing this week. But it's safe to say that pretty much all your work comes back within 12 months. Yeah, it's under a year guaranteed, but this year was a lot of bears, or last year. So. Hi, Avis. I'll try to stay on this side. Thanks, Greg. I hope it helps out some people. Which Greg is that? Greg Taylor. Okay. Hi, Aunt Lori. Jennifer, <laughs> saying the camera lady needs a raise. She's doing a good job. So there's no correct way to like, I guess, skin it out. You can do the front legs, you can do the back legs, you can start in the middle, you can do whatever you want to do. It's the cuts that are imperative. Because when a rug is being made, which I'd probably say, 75 to 80% of the bears that come in get rugged. <laughs> Their skin, and probably half of them are skinned incorrectly. And you can show this table right here. This is where the bears, once they're mounted, similar to like this wolf, they're put upside down and they're stretched out feet in the whole body. So if they're not symmetrical and you got six inches of extra skin on one side, it's got to get taken off the side that it was cut from and, re and moved back to the other side, which is time, you know. You got any questions, Bill? No, we're good. You've seen this done once or twice. I have. The head's where it gets tricky. Yep. No shot. I can off in a minute. There's three, and then the last leg. So Tim wants to know, what would you say are the two biggest mistakes made in the field? Should you take salt into the field? This is a skinny class, not a salty class. I don't speak for Jesse, but if you don't really know what you're doing and um, you are not flushing it correctly, then please don't try to dump as much salt as possible on the hide because it shrinks and makes it really difficult to um, properly flush afterwards. Try to get it to your taxidermist as soon as you can and keep it cool and dry. Yeah. 
Brandon Hitchcock says, oddly, it's very relaxing watching someone else work for a change. <laughs> There's always a smart ass in the bunch. So all I'm doing now is just skinning it up the, the neck to the head as far as I can get it safely without, you know, putting a hole in it. You know, you get an eight foot brown bear, you're not gonna roll it around on a table like this. It's, it'll crush the table, all right? So it was nice enough to have a five and a half foot black bear brought in whole, unskinned, put this class out there. And if it helps one person, then it's worth it. Because every hole, you don't click your fingers and they come together with a snap of fingers. It's sewn together. Every slip of a knife, every wrong cut, is sewed up stitch by stitch. One stitch at a time with, you know, somebody's hands. So what would you say are the two biggest mistakes? Um, cutting from the front of the back feet on our, on our rug and then trying to get fancy and follow the armpit and curve through the armpit and kind of trying to overthink it, you know? When I get this head off, I'll lay it out on the table and you'll see how it, it just falls together, you know, pretty symmetrically. for you. Normally you'd have the carcass, but we try to spin it. Hmm. All right, so obviously something's not cut. Got a strong, strong uh, spinal cord. You set it on the floor. He came in late and was asking about the knife again. What brand is that? It's just a, a knife. You can zoom in on it. Yeah, everybody has their own opinions on knives. If they have gut hooks or serrated edges or, you know, whatever. Six foot long blade. You don't need all that. So. so here's the bear skinned out. You can take something just like this to your taxidermist. And then the taxidermist will get it, check it in, put a tag on it, which should be right here. You know, that's it. Did anybody got any questions? Any more questions? One last thing too. Remember where I cut through the armpit from the elbow up across, right? This is a thin spot. So when this gets tanned, this piece gets brought up to here. And there's your nice symmetrical flat rug. Do not cut, you know, all the way up to the chin, unless you know for a fact you're gonna do a rug. If you know for a fact you're gonna do a rug, continue on straight and you can cut it all the way up to here. It's right where the jawbone starts. So this guy's just getting a tan. So we'll leave it just like that. Yeah, try to stay away from the face. Yep. <laughs> and I think we're gonna do another video here in a few minutes. Yeah, take a take break. The head out. We'll do a video and I'll take the skull out. Take a break. We'll see you back in a bit.
Thanks, guys.